I, we are in the worst moment in the pandemic right now. We have more infections in the United States than at any point. And that's not just based on the case numbers. Uh, we have a lot more testing, so we do have a lot more cases, but uh, it's just we have a lot more infections now than we've had at any point. Right now, we have about 100, as you said, about 120 to 150,000 cases being identified every day. But the truth is that the true number of infections that are occurring in the United States right now is between three and 400,000 a day, maybe even closer to 500,000. We're just missing two thirds to three quarters of all of the infections. Uh, we're missing them because our testing is inadequate. And so because of that, all the people who are not being identified are of course out there spreading the virus to others. And we're in the moment of exponential growth. And so uh, by all expectations, uh, we are, we have, while well, we have a thousand deaths a day right now, we will get to 2000 deaths a day uh, by mid December. And my estimations are that we're going to have an additional 100,000 Americans die of this disease between now and the day that Joe Biden is inaugurated president. Uh, that's what we're on track for. And uh, I have, don't think during the entire nine months of the pandemic, I've been on the front lines, I've uh, been very, uh, deeply engaged. I don't think I've ever felt a moment where there's a bigger disconnect between how bad things are and how little attention we as a country are paying. That contrast right now is baffling to me. I don't understand it. I don't understand why. Um, and here's the one last part, which is, and I know you may want to get into talking about vaccines. We are so close to, to getting to a point where the, where the pandemic starts getting under control. And so it, to me, it's particularly unconscionable to lose another 100,000 Americans over the next two, month and a half, two months, or let's say two next two months, uh, when we know that we are going to end up in the spring with, I think, highly effective vaccines that will make a very big difference. And so it just feels like we're giving up right at the last minute when so much so much suffering is on the, uh, on the line. And we can largely prevent it by many of the things that Nero have talked about. Uh, when uh, Dr. Scott Atlas really took over the coronavirus task force, uh, his strategy has been, he's been very explicit about it, that he believes America is better off if we just let the infection run. Uh, and I think it's unconscionable and I think it is not based on science, but he believes that. So what that has meant is that the White House's uh, footing, which has always had been, we should control the pandemic. We can criticize whether the White House was doing a good enough job or not, but at least Publicly, they were saying they were trying to control the pandemic. Now their footing has changed to we're no longer trying to control the pandemic. Uh, and we heard that from Mr. Meadows, the chief of staff. So that's been one, but the White House has let go. Second is that there has been no aid from Congress to states and to individuals. And so states are in really bad financial shape and individuals are, and states are making, I believe, a series of bad choices. So New York City public schools are about to close but dining, indoor dining is still open in New York. Uh, in Boston, the Boston public schools are closed, but casinos are open in, in the greater Boston area. First of all, I think from a societal point of view, closed schools but open casinos are the wrong trade-offs. Um, but from a financial health of the state point of view, casinos bring in revenue, schools do not. So what we need, we've also had an abdication by Congress that has chosen not to provide any support to states over the last four months. And that has been, and then the third is I think just individual fatigue. People are tired of this. They've been going on this for a long time and they're not seeing much action out of their political leaders and they're letting their guard down. And you put all of that together and you are where we are right now. Um, so there's a lot that the Biden uh, administration can do, the Biden transition team can do between now and January. So obviously they don't have any more any formal powers. I often say, you know, that Mr. Biden has no more power right now than he did a month ago or a year ago. He's a private citizen, but he's not. He's president elect and his team is got a lot of soft power and soft power is what we need right now. So I think uh, Mr. Biden should certainly uh, be very actively engaged himself in talking to people about wearing masks. I have recommended that he consider doing a, a road trip uh, to red states. Uh, where there's a lot of skepticism about mask wearing and talk to people openly and honestly about why wearing masks is, is a good thing to do for yourself, for your family, for your community. Will it convince everybody? Of course not, but we don't have to. Any movement on that I think would help. On the, from the transition team and the, and, the, and the COVID task force, 
One of the major problems we have is we have wholly inadequate testing. One of the reasons we have wholly inadequate testing is that there hasn't been a clear market signal to providers of testing. So I have probably spoken to every major manufacturer of, of testing in America over the last couple of months. They can ramp up testing a lot more, but they don't know that anyone is gonna be on the other side to actually buy the tests and they can't afford to make the investments. The Biden team can start saying to people, we're gonna be in office in two months. We promise you we'll buy the tests. And that is a credibility that will have a huge market signal uh, to these companies. And I can imagine a large ramping up of testing that they can do. And then the last thing is I believe they need to be talking to members of Congress, to both Democrats and Republicans to get a stimulus bill out uh, that gives money to states for testing and for other things. So states can start playing a more active role. If those are three things they can do right now uh, before they show up to power on January 20th.